All right, welcome to the first episode of Dow Talk. It is May 19th, 2022. Uh, I'm Tommy. And I'm Tyler. All right, and uh, this, this is, we're just going to talk about what's going on this weekend, uh, Dow's crypto, Web3, everything under the sun. So, all right, let's get into it. First thing that uh, happened this week, Tyler, you want to give yeah, us a little yeah. intro? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's obviously been an interesting week in the Web3 space and the DAO space. You know, it's bear market vibes. Um, a lot of good memes about building in the bear market. That's certainly something we, you know, feel at Tally. Um, you know, uh, it's like, you know, it's it's a great time to build, right? Like it, it hurts, obviously, like, you know, most people who work in DAOs are, you know, invested in some of our favorite crypto assets. So we're feeling a little bit down, but also, um, it's a really great opportunity to focus on building, yeah, the, f- the future of the space, less noise, um, less people around to speculate, um, more people who are here, um, because, you know, they, they are really committed to what we're trying to build. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if you've been feeling that, uh, this week as well, Tommy. Yeah. I mean, I think for a lot of people because crypto is, or web three is just growing so much, like this is everyone's first, like real uh experience with a bear market right it is for me at least so a thing i keep revisiting is everyone keeps tweeting you know builders this, builders are going to build right this is the perfect time everybody wants a bear market who's in it for the right reasons so a lot of you know what i've been using as like a mental framework to you know not be super anxious or stressed about all this is plugging in with people who are building plugging in with um people in the space who have been here since 2012, 2017 have been through these cycles and they understand how to, you know, navigate those things and understanding, you know, we're going to talk about a 16 disease, uh, state of crypto report. Like the biggest theme is, you know, this is just part of the cycle and the long-term outlook on everything that's happening is good. You know, there's nothing to be too worried about, but dealing with the short-term anxiety of, you know, red, 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 it's over, it's over, it's over. Like it can, it can grind on you. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's, let's get into that. Um, we're really stoked to see AC, a 16 Z's annual state of crypto report, uh, come out this week. And, you know, for, for, for me, like, um, what was most exciting there, um, was, you know, kind of what she said, like there's this natural, it really frames like this natural flow of, you know, the crypto market developing in cycles with, you know, price attracting interest and then, um, that generating new ideas, new funding, uh, to build startups and, and projects. And I think we, you know, absolutely saw that play out over the last year. Um, obviously there's been huge growth, um, in NFTs and it's kind of taken the creator and the content and the brand, um, world by storm. And I think we're seeing some exciting, you know, uh, kind of overlap between, you know, NFTs and DAOs. Like if we were to rewind a year ago, like, you know, there's almost no overlap between NFTs and DAOs. Obviously the NFT space was still, you know, fairly early starting to explode. Um, DAOs also very early. Um, you know, I think traditionally people think of DeFi protocols as, you know, being the, main use case for DAOs, but I think we're really starting to see that change. Um, one DAO we'll talk about a little bit later is Nouns DAO. Um, you know, the, like the way they've kind of incorporated the DAO, like a DAO approach into, um, you know, building out that project is really compelling. And I think we're seeing, yeah, a lot of experimentation and innovation there. So that's one thing I'm excited for seeing this report and just thinking forward is like, what's that going to look like kind of an intersection of NFTs and DAOs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, going back to, you know, just the general thing we're talking about, like with the bear market, like things like this, um, this is what the space needs. Like we need voices who are voices of reason who are doing, you know, the hard research, who are looking at the data. And, um, I, I, for myself, I, I have to be, be careful with, you know, the content I'm consuming. Um, like it, it's good to not be in an echo chamber. But also, like, you have to be careful not to be listening to, you know, Twitter trolls who are telling you everything's going to zero and you should quit whatever you're working on and, you know, (laughs) just get out. But 
with with this report, like this is is one of the first graphics, but like this is something that throughout the rest of you know, if you want to read it all, we'll link it. But um, you've probably seen it if you're listening to this. But this is the thing that struck me the most, and I feel like uh, this is the general theme of the rest of the report, which is, um, you know, it's a feedback loop, right? Over time, each cycle that we go through, where it's like up and then down and then up and then down. Like the troughs are getting lower and the peaks are getting higher, and it's just a sign of greater adoption within the space. So, I mean, I can't speak for from personal experience like being in the earlier cycles um but just talking to everyone in, who's been there and done it um they all seem to be bullish on the future of crypto and if you just look at what's being built you know for instance with tally like we can see you know what DAOs are building how many how many proposals are going through who's voting um it, it's it's encouraging to say the least yeah absolutely yeah is there anything else you want to cover on this? Um, no, let's keep let's keep rolling. Let's keep it moving. All right, cool. What do we got next? Coinbase's uh, Web three mobile app integration. Yeah, let's 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 roll to there. Yeah, so you know, speaking of uh, speaking of you know bullish things for the space and kind of that process of mass mass adoption. Um, it was really exciting to see Coinbase launch their custodial Web3 wallet solution. Um, I think, you know, we're still digging in to see exactly what that looks like, but um, I think the idea is that users can kind of use the Coinbase like UX that we're familiar with that's very user friendly. It doesn't necessarily require, you know, the same level of expertise to um, use a true, you know, self custody wallet, like a MetaMask, um, but where they can actually plug into some of these web three applications. Um, I think, you know, it looks like they're launching with some, uh, of the more popular DeFi applications. I could see this also, you know, plugging into like an open C. Um, I know Coinbase has their own, you know, uh, c competitor or like, um, it's not a know. competitor, Tyler. Yeah. Don't That's call right. it a competitor. <laughs> it, they have their own, you know, play in the, in the <laughs> NFT marketplace world. But um, I think I think this this makes a lot of sense. Like, you know, I'm a nerd, right? And so I like love figuring out how to actually use Ethereum. But it is hard and it is technical. And of course, like you know, making mistakes could cost you money. Does cost you money? And so I think you know, Coinbase investing in an experience where um, users can. Uh, you know, interact with Web3, um, but from, you know, the at least perceived safety or the comfort of Coinbase's custodial solution, I think is a big step forward for the, uh, yeah. for, for, for the space. Yeah. I mean, go, going off of, I mean, we just talked to our CEO, Dennison, he, he brought up, you know, a, a lot of these DAOs, people who are, you know, joining these DAOs are working, um, they, they're not super educated on Web3. Like they don't even know about the concept of wallets. So if you extrapolate that over, you know, hey, how are we going to like going back to the A16Z chart? Like, how do we get those peaks higher? How do we get more people into this space? I think it's it's not, you know, like right to assume that everyone who's going to come in in the next wave is going to be as self-motivated as the people who are in it now or who joined into the space five years ago, right? So we need... And I know people like, like idealists and OGs, like it's like right in that fine line between decentralization and centralization. And obviously like Coinbase is more on the centralization side, but we need tools like this in order to onboard the next wave of people, right? Like we need to be able to make it as easy as possible to onboard into the space. And I think this is a step in the right direction. Yeah, I, th I think the decentralization versus centralization discussion, it's nuanced because, yeah. you know, obviously using a custodial wallet from Coinbase is more centralized than using a self-custody wallet. But if that's able to allow more people to participate in DAOs, um, that probably opens the door to additional decentralization um, by allowing more people to get involved in governance um, yeah. of some of these protocols. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, um, okay. Let's talk about this week in DAOs, like what's going on in the DAO space. I think first up, we have something going on in the, in the Uniswap world. You want to give yeah. us a little intro into that? 
Yeah, absolutely. So well, the Uniswap, sweet- Uniswap is talking about deploying to new chains. Um, super exciting. Like I think, you know, somewhat famously, uh, Uniswap has been slower to move to a multi-chain world. Um, you had Sushi Swap that deployed to like, you know, 69 chains uh, really quickly. Um, Uniswap, I think, stayed only on Ethereum for quite a while, more recently moved to um, a couple of layer twos uh, like Optimus and Ar- Ar- Arbitrum, and then also uh, the a po- a side chain in the, in the form of Polygon. Um, and, uh, and so this is like a, a step, uh, like a strong step in, ter- in terms of expanding the, uh, the, the kind of like multi-chain Uniswap, uh, vision. I think like you can see Hayden's tweet here, like the hesitancy around multi-chain, uh, Uniswap has really originated from like the governance challenges that come with that. So this is a big, like you know, uh, topic in DAOs. Um, we saw some interesting discussion around this this week, but like, how do you implement governance in a multi-chain world? Um, I think is, is somewhat of an unsolved problem. Um, you know, we've seen kind of, you know, the challenges with bridge design where there's not actually a trustless link between chains. And so therefore, if you have, you know, uni governance tokens, on one chain versus another, um, you may not be able to, you know, participate in governance in the same way. And so, um, I think that's, that's kind of like, um, the challenge. Um, but we're, you know, Uniswap really opened up to the community to make proposals, uh, to move forward bravely into that future anyway. And so, um, we've seen a couple of early proposals, um, that have either completed or been active this week. Um, specifically, uh, it looks like there is an, uh, a proposal passed to deploy Uniswap to Moonbeam, um, and there's still one that's active um, to deploy to Gnosis Chain. I'll be honest, I don't really know what Moonbeam is. Like, <laughs> I assume it's some kind of like EVM fork. Um, the name is pretty sweet. Like, you know, I, I, like imagine like the power, like you know, of like a full moon at night, just like casting down upon you. But yeah, I'm not totally sure what's going on on that chain. Um, let us know, like you know, <laughs> if we need to be educated. Um, but apparently, the community wants to move Uniswap there. And uh, you know, one wh- one other thing that I think is interesting about this is like we've seen some kind of like native, you know, Uniswap forks, like Uni V2 forks that have shown up on uh, some of these other chains, and like I feel like they're just gonna get crushed by 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 uniswap like we saw that happen on on polygon um where basically as soon as uniswap deployed they became the number one dex on polygon i think we're gonna see that happen yeah on some of these other chains as well yeah for sure um so yeah this is the tally interface if you are not familiar with it uniswap is what it is the largest DAO that uses tally am i correct in saying that um yeah yeah i think so i mean there are several there's like um compound um, now in style, like there, there's several other larger DAOs, Large but, ones, um, yeah. but yeah, U- Uniswap, um, is definitely one of the most active, uh, DAOs on Tally. Yeah. So if you're unfamiliar with Tally, which is where we're coming from, um, this is what it looks like proposal you can see is passed and it was executed on chain. Um, it looks summary. like almost everyone voted for it except for like that one person, the red, <laughs> the red address there. Um, they just, they're not, not about the moonbeam lifestyle, but it looks like it's quite popular as a whole. It was indeed. I think there's one more Uniswap proposal we can look at. Yeah. Let's there's see. an active one for deploying for to, to Gnosis, Gnosis chain. chain. So yeah. that, that you can still vote for. So if you're a uni token holder with voting power, um, go let them know whether you want to deploy to Gnosis chain. It looks popular okay. so far, but, um, you can see, I don't know if they've reached quorum yet. Um, yeah, they, be down there. they already have, but there's still, if you scroll back up to the top, it'll say when the voting period ends. 15 hours, 24 minutes. So All by right. the time this comes out, it might be too late, but dun, they've dun, already dun. reached quorum. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Well, okay. Uh, moving along. We got Lil Nouns Dow, which if you're not familiar with Nouns Dow, which is kind of the original CCO, um, is it, do you pronounce it CCO or is it CC0 or what? That's a good question. I've always said it in my head as CCO, but well, <laughs> it sounds cooler than CC0, but I don't know. Either way, um, Lil Nouns DAO is a derivative experiment 
coming off of non-style. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, nouns is really cool, like kind of DAO forward or like DAO managed NFT project. Um, it's gotten very expensive. Um, you know, they, they only, uh, they only meant one noun per day. Um, and it's really difficult. And then like, you have to have a noun to get involved in, in the project, you know, both to get exposure to nouns, but also to get involved in the DAO governance. And so little nouns style is cool. Cause it's, it's a fork of, of, um, of nouns DAO, but they mint a little noun every 15 minutes instead of daily. So that should increase the supply um, and, you know, should lead to a lower price and also more accessibility to get involved in the project. Yeah. So I so, think this is a really cool way to kind of help scale out um, the nouns DAO approach uh, to governing an NFT project. Super excited to see where this goes. Yeah. For instance, uh, noun 313, which is the original nouns project, the current bid on it is 33 ETH or around 66 K US dollars. Um, Lil noun, which is much more recent is already on uh, NFT number 568. And the current bid is 1.69 ETH. So just under like 4k. So it's, it's a much, and I'm sure that will get lower as time goes on or maybe not. We'll, we'll know, who know, who know, but, uh, definitely a much more, um, accessible price point. I mean, 1.69 ETH is still, you know, a good chunk of money, but compared to 33 to 50 ETH, um, much more accessible. So really cool to see what's going on in the nouns world. There's always something awesome going on, um, in that, in that environment. I love what they're doing. So it's definitely one to watch. All right. So next up, we got a project from shapeshift. Tyler, you want to give us a little more insight on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, shapeshift out is super interesting. Um, it's, uh, it's a, it, it's kind of, it's one of those like DeFi projects that has transitioned into a DAO over time. Um, it's led by Eric Voorhees, who's like an OG Bitcoiner and, and crypto person. Um, and we saw them transition from like a traditional corporation, um, which I think is registered in the United States into a DAO, uh, last year. And they're trying to finalize that project. Um, and it looks like they've implemented uh, like a not-for-profit into the mix um, to help kind of make that transition fully um, to decentralization. And so um, this is something really interesting to dig into, especially if you're curious on, you know, what are the right like legal structures and processes um, for, for implementing a DAO? I know this team is super thoughtful and trying to do things the right way. Um, so it'll be exciting to follow along with uh, their journey. I think it's all good. Um, something to touch on there is like how DAOs are, are formed. Like, I feel like there are two pathways, right? Either you set out with the intention to be a DAO and you start to centralize and you work your way up from there, or you you're coming from a centralized organization and you're trying to decentralize. Um, for instance, ENS is the one that comes to mind. Um, it'll be interesting to see, I don't know what you think. Do you think, you know, as, as the DAO space grows, um, we, something we always talk about is, is the more you really dig into, um, DAO infrastructure, which is what we do on a daily basis, you realize there's not a ton of players in the space. You know, we always debate, Hey, is it over or under a thousand, like truly active DAOs? Um, so what do you think, do you think we're going to see more like traditional, like web two companies? You know, not big, well, obviously, but um, like traditional Web2 structure transition into a decentralized organization? Or do you think it's going to be more people coming in, wanting to start a project and starting a DAO first or what? What, yeah. do you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think we'll see some of both. I think um, really in both cases, though, um, I think in order to be successful there, it really requires a very high degree of intentionality. I don't think just like randomly dialifying an existing, you know, web two or like legacy company or being like, I want to start something and I'm going to make it a DAO because DAOs are cool, um, is really the right approach. It's quite difficult to, um, 
to execute in well in a DAO and um, set up a DAO so it can sustain and scale. Um, when we talk about you know the process of creating a DAO, like the first step is always like why a DAO, or maybe before that, what are we trying to accomplish, and then why why is the DAO structure the right way to do that? Um, why do we want to make contribution permissionless? Why do we want um, you know, uh, to, you know, incentivize, uh, like, you know, people who are interested from the public, uh, to really participate in this project and be along for the ride, um, you know, versus having a more traditional legal structure, which, you know, um, maybe is more centralized and less permissionless, um, but does have way more, you know, more established processes, um, you know, and does, doesn't come with maybe some of the challenges that implementing via DAO do, does. So um, I think Shapeshift, you know, they really went through a process a process of like, why does the DAO structure make sense for them? I think it was in their case, like it was, they kind of had to in, in order to stay compliant, which is certainly like a reason to, get, to go the DAO route. Um, I think we'll see more organizations like move the DAO route just because like it allows them to scale the involvement of community versus just like, you know, regulatory arbitrage basically, but you know, the, the bottom line is like, I think we'll continue to see people, you know, implement DAOs or transition to DAOs, but I would definitely rec recommend to teams out there to really be thoughtful about why that's the right approach before you jump in. Yeah, I agree. Um, all right, let's go, let's jump into optimism a little bit, a lot happening, um, on the optimism front, just pull up this tweet. You want to give us a little context on, you know, if people are not familiar with optimism, a layer two on yeah. Ethereum, um, what's going on in that world? Yeah, they really lean into like the OP memes. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. So optimism is like one of the leading layer two, uh, you know, s solutions, um, and uh, for, for Ethereum, um, and they recently. Uh, released their token um, and created the DAO, which I think they're calling the Optimism Collective. Um, there's a they're, they're trying to implement like a bunch of interesting things into their DAO structure, um, trying to innovate and drive the space forward, which is fantastic to see. Um, one of the approaches they're taking is like uh, they like uh, there's a natural process of like phases ending or like approaches that the DAO is taking ending and transitioning into new ones. And so this is like a new phase for them. Um, and with that, they're implementing, um, an operating manual for, uh, for the collective. Um, it looks like it pulls from existing, you know, best practice kind of governance approaches, um, for DAOs in the space. Um, but it really describes like the process of um, how do you create a proposal? How does a community engage with that? What does voting look like? Um, and so if you're interested in governance models, definitely worth digging in to see, um, see kind of like the approach they're taking and follow along to learn from it. Yeah, something, you know, I'm, I'm not brand new, but like relatively new to the DAO space. So a lot of it's very, it can be very over as, as in anything in Web3, it can be very overwhelming to try to, um, grasp everything that's happening. And what I've found is look at the big players, look at the people, look at the organizations who have done it successfully. Um, a lot of them, you know, you have maker compound optimism, like they are very open with how they operate and what is successful and what's not successful. And I think we're going to look back five, 10 years, like even now, um, like compounds like governance model is pretty much right it's compound yeah their compounds implementation of open zeppelin governor is like often used often forked you know often used as the yeah. standard for on-chain governance implementations yeah. so i think like we're we're gonna maybe by intention or not i think um they're almost like like test subjects and if, if they're successful on, on a large scale, I think a lot of people will adopt those models, um, in the future. And then you have things like, um, Orca protocol, you know, those are that pod structure is being adopted by, um, uh, Faye. Like there's just, so, there's so many different ways to, um, we're still like in the experimental phase. Like 
it's a it's one big massive work experiment um and i think if you realize or you understand that hey we're all just figuring it out as we go um and i don't mean that in a negative way i think that's a really good like serendipitous thing um it allows for you know really awesome innovation and it's ushering us into a new era of work so i think that that kind of pushes us right into our next subject which is is this what we're calling think boy stuff Right. Yeah, yeah. It's so time. basically, it's, it's, it's time for some DAO thought leadership uh, so, from 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 Twitter. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's, let's dive in. So yeah, um, so yeah, we'll, we're, we'll cover the the basis of you know the not the boring stuff, but like what what happened in the week, and now we'll dive into you know the viral tweets, the the fun hot takes on Twitter. Yeah, um, this is this is all the best takes. Everybody's getting their takes off. Um, let's let's do a review, and we'll do our own little takes too on each one. That's right. That's let's, right. Uh, let's kick it off. You want to talk yeah. about the first one? Yeah. So um, yeah. So for um, you know, first of all, a cu couple of really interesting pieces of content um, came out on the Tally blog this week. Um, you know, t Tally is really trying to like dive into every possible aspect of DAOs, um, surface what we're learning, um, to help people, yeah, move, move forward in the space. Um, so, um, one piece that came out that was interesting is, um, you know, a piece on why you should care about the philosophy behind DAOs. And I think this is really important. Um, you know, DAOs come with a lot of challenges and so like really, you know, uh, as we're building, really trying to remind ourselves like, like what is a DAO? What is decentralization? Why does that matter? And what does that mean for how we operate them? Um, it's really important. So this article is pretty cool because, um, it goes, it goes into like, you know, definitionally, like what is a DAO philosophically, and then runs through some examples of like, um, governance processes that have occurred, particularly in DeFi protocols and talks about like what, you know, how those kind of line up with, with what a DAO is. Um, so definitely would recommend checking this thing out. Yeah. We're putting out a lot of, or Tally's putting out a lot of really good thought leadership content from, um, everyone in the space. So if you're hearing this and you think you have something to contribute and it can be anything from as boring as possible, which is what we're going to talk about on our next article, um, which boring is good, right? Like I think uh, a theme we've, we've hit on is, you know, yeah, crypto and Web3 is sexy, right? But at the end of the day, and like in a bear market, I don't think sexy matters. I think, you know, we, we're trying to build something that's going to last for the next 50, 100, 150 years. And a lot of times that work is boring. For sure. For sure. So let's talk um, our good friend, Sam, who is one of, in my opinion, one of the best writers and thought leaders in the DAO space. If you don't know her um, or have not heard of her, um, I would suggest starting with this article and then following her on Twitter and just reaching out if you have questions. She's really easy to talk to and is extremely, extremely smart when it comes to um, what's happening in the DAO space. If you want to join a DAO, if you want to get involved in one, if you are having trouble with your own DAO, um, I can't yeah. say enough good things that are. Yeah, absolutely. So this article is about how it's time for DAOs to get a little more boring um, and touches on some of the like resources and processes, operational processes, benefits that, uh, you know, have been figured out well um, in many centralized organizations and kind of what those could potentially mean for DAOs, like why they're important um, for contributors to have access um, or to incorporate some of these resources into the DAO, um, and then how DAOs, like, you know, it, there are some unique challenges, right, to liability in DAOs. Like the default state is that everyone is liable. That's not what you want, right? Like on an individual basis. So like, um, what are, you know, legal approaches that can be taken there? Um, you know, how do we think about taxes for contributors? How do we optimize, you know, uh, compensation, um, to be maximally beneficial from a tax perspective, um, stuff like that. So like, this is an amazing overview and then dives into like concrete, 
you know, next steps that you can take for your DAO and on each area, um, you know, including PTO, liability, taxes, retirement, um, and more. I think we're all trying to retire, you know, or be semi-retired. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, definitely recommend this as like a handbook for, yeah, the boring stuff in DAOs. Yeah. I, I mean, no one wants to really listen to people. I mean, I'm sure there's some people like masochists out there that just want to listen to people talk about taxes for hours, but I, I, I bet if you're listening to this, you probably don't, but this affects everyone who's working. Um, so it, it's good to have this, even if you don't want to, um, study it and read it like gospel, it's good to have this because it's going to pop up in some way in your personal or your professional life. If you're working in this space. And, uh, I think the people who get ahead of it, um, are setting themselves up for success down the line, whether you're just a contributor or you're uh, forming a DAO or you're one of the, you know, more involved people in the DAO space. So there's a real, a lot of really awesome, uh, startups and tools and things that are popping up around, um, DAO infrastructure. Tally is one. Um, so yeah, a lot, a lot to, a lot to unpack there. Uh, next up, we got a nice thread from Ross on Twitter. You've probably seen them. Um, always have some more controversial tweets, controversial takes. I really enjoy uh, their content, but uh, let's pull this one up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is just like a nice like bear market learnings thread. Um, that's another awesome benefit of the bear market is people like take more time to share what they've learned. Um, so this is a good one on that front. It's like you know Ross has actually been building in the DAO space for multiple years um, and sharing yeah, some of the like issues that we're running into, but also like what's, what's starting to work and what doesn't work there. Um, a lot of this thread is about like reducing complexity. Um, so it's like a lot of these steps to, for example, on-chain DAO governance, um, whether it be like, yeah, creating proposals, delegation, voting, like they're fairly complicated um, and also expensive uh, oftentimes, you know, because on-chain voting is often still implemented on um, the, Ethereum L1 mainnet. And so, um, you know, I think what we're seeing is like, how can we implement structures that like facilitate input, they provide accountability. So like, um, the community still has like the power to say no to things and the power to propose things when they really want them. Um, but like minimizes the level of like, you know, smart contract based coordination that actually has to happen. Um, so I think that's a lot of what Ross is exploring here. Um, and maybe some solutions that push us, uh, yeah in in that uh in in that direction um so yeah um i think yeah. uh oh, go, go ahead tommy yeah I, well i think the, the next couple things we're going to talk about i think we can kind of end on this like this broader philosophical thought because i think you know something we've been talking about internally is in the bear markets everyone starts to get you know philosophical because i think it forces people to really um come to terms with uh what they want to spend their time on because i think when everything isn't up only you really uh turn inwards and you you figure out like hey i think because you get stressed and you get anxious you're like hey is this worth it is this like for me and for instance like you know there's a lot of anxiety around this time and you have to you have to sit back and think hey is this worth it and for me yeah and i think a lot of people in the space are thinking the same thing and um i mean going into the next one from sam like it's the philosophical question of, you know, what's the point of DAOs? Is it just, I've heard a lot of people talk like, you know, DAOs are just, you know, the same structure of a, like it, it, they're, they're destined to end up in the same way that every other, you know, uh, organizational structure that has existed in the past, you know, 150 years. Um, so like, what's the point? Like, what would you say? Like, is it worth like he, he asked the question, like, Hey, if all these, a lot of these DAOs are, you know, devolving into chaos, like, is it worth even, you know, what the philosophical question of, is it even worth investing all this time and resource into? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, uh, I think, you know, the message that Sam is sending here, um, and we're also going to talk in a sec about, um, you know, an, an, another organization that's uh, taking a similar approach and Iris Rising is like, 
it's like build build what you wish to see in the world right so like of course DAOs have challenges um you know what what can we do what can we build um to to solve them and so i think that's like the tone here and that's certainly like the attitude i share um i don't think that DAOs like get rid of human coordination problems right <laughs> right like like the same problems of course still exist in DAOs as they exist in any other organization um whether it be just like coordination problems about work um you know creating sort of like weird uh incentive structures where people try to accrue power for power itself um you know lack of transparency like of course these things are popping up right um so i think we just need to solve them in the context of DAO specifically. And so Sam really proposes some like, uh, you know, tried like and tested um, ways that some of these problems can be addressed um, within organizations, but from a DAO native approach. And so um, I think this is a great thing to dig into. Like if you're, if you're feeling pain in terms of just coordination um, and, and structure inside of your DAO, this is a great thread to dig into um, and reach out to Sam for uh, for some advice. Yeah. Kristen Stone, you're talking about Iris Rising. She has a yeah. really good um, thread that gets plays right into that, talking about, you know, broken behaviors and yeah. how communities can get ruined if not, uh, you know, tended to. It, it's a garden, in my opinion. Like, you have to tend to, to community and... Um, you know, like a lot, I think a lot of non-technical people get into, into web three and they, you know, a lot of them flow into a community role and not many realize, you know, what that actually entails and how delicate, you know, the community is. And I, we've, I know we've seen, you can definitely think of one, um, just complete community meltdown that's been taken over by behaviors that if we're aware of, we could, we could stop letting them, you know, happen. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So Kristen has a couple of challenges here. One, um, you know, uh, folks who are maybe better at like talking than doing, um, taking power and resources in DAOs, and then also like um, some challenges around inclusion, right? Um, maybe um, folks who have been underrepresented in the past um, or have been systematically discouraged from contributing, um, aren't you know getting the full access uh, to contribute in DAOs that we would like to see, and so the approach she's taking is um, starting this Iris Rising group, um, or it's like a super contributor. So the idea is really curating a group of like um, very uh, experienced and productive um, folks. Um, and deploying them into DAOs strategically um, to contribute. Um, so really helping DAOs like kind of curate uh, contributors and also injecting like great pe great people um, from a diverse set of backgrounds into the DAO ecosystem. So love this approach. Um, I think, yeah, w the more we can do to create like structures that encourage like or incentivize um, great like productive diverse people to get involved in DAOs the better yeah something I, i've had in my head th since i've you know gone full-time web3 is a, a lot of these concepts like you know finance organizational structures like work are things i despised when i was in college and i was coming up and like you know working for a consultancy firm and being in the corporate like prison, I hated all of it. And now that I'm in web three, it's like, it's this like at its core, what, what is happening like with DeFi and, and NFTs and DAOs, like it is, it is the same thing. Right. Um, I was thinking like, why, why am I so much more energized by it? I'm still trying to figure that out. But I think if anyone is, has any, like, if you're listening to this or just, you know, someone who has any interest or not even interest, just hates what they're doing in the traditional, whether it be web two or traditional finance, like there's an unlimited amount of problems that need to be solved. Like this, for instance, is something I, maybe I would have thought of eventually, but I see it and I'm like, oh my God, like, yeah, this is exactly something that the space needs. And there's, I can name how like a ton more of just, no matter what your skill set is, you don't have to be technical. You, you can be technical. You don't have to be able to talk. You don't have to be good at community, but there's a place for everyone in this space. And I think like 
if, if we take anything from all of this, it's like, I'm very encouraged by it all. And like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, you know what I mean. It's 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 a it's a really interesting point. Like, you know, if we have some of these same problems or challenges in DAOs that we do in say traditional corporations, why why DAOs? Why, why are we motivated? Why are we working in the space? I think like my one answer that I have to that is that like we are invited to solve them, right? Like, yeah. um, in you know the power to um to make change or to build something inside of a traditional corporation is often permissioned. Um, first you have to have the title, then you can do the thing. Um, and I think in DAOs, you know, we're flipping that on its head, um, by saying like, you know, power comes less from the title that you're given and more from your ability to contribute. And I think that's the idea we're trying to live up to. And I know that's like a lot of where my energy for the space comes from is like, um, feeling like it's possible, um, not just for myself, but for anyone, you know, no matter who they are, uh, no matter what their background is around the world, um, to, you know, take, take their own crack at like building, uh, some of these systems. Yeah. That's a good point. I think like the question is like, why DAOs? Like, is it worth like, like what Sam Sperlin was talking about? It is better. It's like, the, we're in a, we're in a growing period and there's going to be growing pains and there's going to be, you know, a lot of frustration, but at the end of the day, like it's better, you know, that's all, like, it's as simple as that. Um, it's attracting idealists. And I'd much rather work with idealists than people who are just committed to staying in the corporate structure. And, you know, it's the cycle of like, well, I worked, I slaved away for 10 years working, you know, 18 hours a day in investment banking, just so when I'm 45, I can make my $10 million salary and use, you know, kids straight out of college to do the actual work. Like, I think at the end of the day, like, it's much more better to just live in a permissionless environment and it's completely up to you how much you want to contribute and you will be rewarded for your contribution. Whether you, whether you feel like you haven't been already, eventually you will be. And I think that's, that's the system and in, in the market that web three is creating. So exciting. Okay. Let's end on something fun. Meme of the week. Yeah, you want sure. I know you love yeah. this meme. So. I, yeah, yeah, this meme cracks me up. You, you should pull it up. So I will, yeah. it's like, you know, like we're feeling good. Like, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm really like really contributing to the DAO space. And that's why they call me, that's why they call me 007. You know, I've made uh, absolutely <laughs> zero <laughs> multi-sig transactions. Haven't done any of those, you know. <laughs> zero governance proposals haven't even read them but i have sent seven gms <laughs> i love it that's from my there's, our... there's a lot of there's a lot of double oh sevens in the dallas <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> yes <laughs> so that's our friend dan Wu, uh orca protocol um we mentioned them earlier but uh yeah good stuff out of there uh any any closing thoughts on the week any any uh thoughts going into into the weekend Nah, man, it's going to be, yeah, good vibes. Um, you know, uh, looking forward to another week of bear market building next yeah. week. Let's go. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, just, I'm really excited to be in this space. I, I think we need some positivity right now and it's almost like, you know, right now it's, it's going to come down to community and you know, us all like being in this together. Um, I I've seen a lot of people on Twitter just call out bullshit when they see it and like just being unnecessarily mean for no reason. I think the terror collapse was, you know, super shitty, but there's a lot of really good voices on Twitter who, um, are pushing good vibes, check on your friends, check on your enemies. At the end of the day, we're all just human. Um, yeah. Yeah, just absolutely. Be, be, nice, yeah, be nice to each other. Yeah, absolutely. Check on your friends. Like, I, it's kind of awkward to be like, "Yo, you're doing all right. You're doing all right explicitly," but like, just do it. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, let's focus on on what we can build. Yeah, man. All right. Well, that's been Dow Talk Episode One. 
If you like it, comment. If you hate it, comment. We want to hear every and all feedback from it. Um, it whether we have five listeners or a million, we'll be here every week. Um, so, yeah, let's just keep building. See you next week. Peace. <laughs>